<laughs> Finally, my slumber is over. I've grown this incredible mustache and I can get back to doing what I do. Which is another way to say that the next exam is in two weeks and I have time to record this video at the moment. Hello everybody, my name is Peter. I hope you're doing good and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So this video has been hugely requested in the last couple of months following these three videos here on how to make a first person or third person mobile game with Unity. Today we're gonna add gravity and jumping to our player controller and yeah, that's all. If you enjoyed the video and find it interesting or useful, please consider leaving a like and subscribing and let's get right into it. What the fuck am I doing? What is this? First thing first, we're gonna add gravity to the player controller to have it fall down when there's no ground below it. To do so, we'll just take inspiration from real-world physics where to find the velocity of an object, we'll just multiply its acceleration by the time that it's applied. In terms of our game environment, we'll have the vertical velocity of our player be the product of a gravity that we will define in the script, and time dot data time, which is Unity's way to refer to the frame rate, so the velocity is consistent through the whole game. Also, in order to know when to apply gravity to the player, we're gonna use Unity's physics engine to cast a small sphere below the player and check when it's actually colliding with the ground. Please bear in mind that today I'm only gonna focus on what's relevant to the topic of the video, but everything that I'm gonna show you is easily built on top of the player controller script that we wrote in the last few episodes. The first thing we're gonna need in our player controller class is a reference to the character controller component that we're gonna be using to control our player. Also, we're gonna need two public fields, stick to ground force and gravity. These are actually the same thing, but we're gonna use stick to ground force as gravity or acceleration when we are actually grounded and gravity when we're airborne. I'm declaring them both with the same default value, but bear in mind that this way will allow you to change one without affecting the other. Also, I'm adding a private variable, vertical velocity, to store the current vertical velocity of the player. For checking if the player is grounded, we'll have a reference to do a transform that in the scene will specify where we're gonna cast our check sphere. We we'll also have a layer mask reference to mark all the layers that we're gonna consider ground, and the ground check radius, which is just a float that represents the radius of the sphere. And once again, I'm showing you on screen what I mean by the ground check sphere. It just simply checks whether the player is colliding with an object on a ground layer. Last thing last, we're gonna have a bool called grounded, which is gonna store whether the player is actually on the ground or not. And believe me when I say that it's gonna be pretty straightforward, in fact for the ground check we're just gonna cast the check sphere using the physics engine at the ground check position with the radius we want to see if it intersects with any object on the ground layers. We'll then take the value returned by this function, which is a bool, and store it in grounded. The reason we're using fixed update instead of simply update is because it's common practice to do everything related with the physics engine in fixed update to not have it depend on the frame rate. We are now moving to the move function, which is where we are already calculating the XZ movement of our player. I'm not gonna include the death code because I have already two videos on the topic, and instead I'm gonna focus on the vertical or Y movement of the player. And this is just gonna be finding two different scenarios in which applying the same formula with different parameters. If the player is grounded and nothing has caused it to move upwards, then we're gonna set the vertical velocity to the product of negative stick to ground force times time dot delta time. And the reason I'm using the minus sign on stick to ground force is because I'm considering positive values as going upwards and negative values as going downwards. If the player is not grounded or moving upwards, we are decreasing its vertical velocity by a factor of gravity times time dot delta time. Lastly, we are just gonna calculate the vertical movement vector, which is gonna be the product of transform dot up for the player and vertical velocity, and apply it via the character controller dot move function. Make sure you are still multiplying it by time dot delta time because that's our best way to approximate how real life physics work. As a last step, as we were doing previously with the character controller movement, we are just gonna call the move function from update to have it happen every second. The setup in the inspector is gonna be quite simple, we are simply gonna assign the character controller component to the reference in the script 
and some values to stick to ground force and gravity. For the ground check, the first thing we're gonna need to do is add an empty child to the player object and position it in the scene where we think the feet of our player are. After that, we're just gonna assign the transform to the reference in the controller. For ground layers, we'll simply set the flags to all the layers we want to consider ground. If you don't know how to add a custom layer to your game, this is how it's done. In the editor, just go on the top right corner, click on layers and then edit layers. And here is where you can add custom names for layers where you can position your objects on. Going back to the inspector, you can now select every new layer that you added in the layer mask dropdown. The last field we're gonna initialize is just ground check radius and we're just gonna give it some small arbitrary value. I like to give it 0.1 but you can actually do whatever you want and whatever works for your game. In play mode you will now see that lifting your player off the ground will cause it to fall back down with a speed that is dictated by the gravity. Increasing the gravity will increase the speed at which it falls down and decreasing will decrease it. Sounds quite right. Now everything we're gonna need to make a player jump is just a way to trigger a change in its vertical velocity and set it positive. And this is, once again, extremely simple. Just add a new float field jump force in our class, which is gonna be the initial velocity of our player's jump, and declare a new one line jump function that, when called if the player is grounded, will set its vertical velocity to the jump force. And we're almost there! Now we just need to hook the function up to an input, maybe the press of a key on the keyboard, of a button on a gamepad, or a virtual UI button on the screen of your phone. For proof of concept and sticking to the topic of the video, I'm just gonna use the ladder method, but the other two are just as simple, if not even more. In the editor, I'm gonna create a new UI image, drag it to the bottom right corner of the screen, and just adjust the style a little bit to have it not look like crap. Taking care of the look of the button, I'm adding an event trigger component to the object, and to it, I'm adding a new event of type pointer down. For this event, I will create a new listener, drag in the player object selecting the player controller script and the jump function. And this is all we needed to do. Now, in play mode, you will notice that pressing the jump button will cause the player to jump, and changing the jump force will change the height our player is able to reach. You can bring down the jump force to have a more reasonable jump height, or bring it up to unreasonable heights to have your player shoot for the stars and never come back. And now, a couple of ideas on how to expand on these concepts. And that was it! I hope you enjoyed it and learned something today. I'm not gonna ask you to subscribe again because I already did it at the beginning of the video, but please do! But in case you decide to stick around, see you next time! Ooh.